my name's Casey Vasto, and uh, I live in the Bridgewater area. I run a business called Casey Vasto Mediation Services. So I do mediation work um, and some coaching and education on communication and conflict literacy skills. And um, I live on a beautiful farm. There's sort of like two streams to it. So the the one is more of the mediation work where uh, I work with groups who specifically ask me to help them through a conflict um, and to work through like a specific issue that they're dealing with, that being sort of uh, couples or organizations and businesses who are um, struggling with their teams. And then the sort of the flip side of that is the education component, so doing uh, workshops and education there's a there's a like a strong trend right now it seems like that especially in in businesses and organizations that are experiencing conflict they don't just want someone to come in and help them solve the one issue and put it behind them they want they seems like generally groups want to have the education and the skills themselves um to you know create growth on their team and uh be able to at least partially, you know, address some of that stuff with their internal resources. Yeah. Um, so that's where I came. I come in and go in and uh, teach a couple different modalities: uh, empathic listening, um, how to frame, how to frame conflict uh, and communication using a little bit of a different language tool, and that's that's where the nonviolent communication comes in. So it's like a reframing tool. Um, because often when we approach conflict, the first, the first and like sort of front of our mind uh, has a message like, this is the problem, this is what's wrong with them, um, and this is why I'm right. You know, that's sort of our general, I won't say intuitive approach to conflict, but habitual, let's say, approach. Um, and then the NBC tool, nonviolent communication tool, comes in and, and suggests, you know, let's name exactly what happened without mixing our judgment of how right or wrong it was into it. Let's talk about how we felt as a result of that and what are our, what are, are our unmet needs as people um, that aren't being served in this situation and then how can we better meet them? So it really, it's a, it's a reframe that has nothing to do with who's right and who's wrong, which, uh, which when we stay focused in that framework, only serves to make changes through through punishment, through shame, through guilt, through hating yourself, and those changes never last. Um, it's, a, it's a hot word, and I think people have pretty different uh, opinions on the definition of empathy. So I'll just let you know the one that I use. Uh, it's a four-part definition. So part one is um, staying out of judgment. It's a huge component of being able to be truly empathic is to kind of put the, the judgment component of your brain to bed for a little bit. The next piece is perspective taking. So re regardless of what someone else is saying, whether you agree with them or not, you can acknowledge that that is what it looks like from their perspective with the information that they have. The third piece is um, sensing the feelings and unmet needs that 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 person is experiencing. And then the fourth piece is being able to communicate that sense or that guess that you're having, which shows that your attention is fully in their experience, you know, which is something that is, doesn't really come naturally that we can give other people, but you have to practice it. Um, um, and so it's just retraining our ears on what to listen for. Um, but when we can effectively use that tool and you know you you get that feedback and then you can say hey are you saying that you're feeling really frustrated because you're wanting me to think about your needs first um well a the energy comes right down um but b it also protects you from ever being insulted or offended because you know that what they're saying is even if they're calling you say selfish for lack of a better word um it's not really about you. They're talking about their needs, and you don't have to hear that evaluation of yourself when you have your when you have your NVC ears on. So yeah, it's so hard. It's astoundingly difficult um, because everything in your body wants to be like, "No, you're wrong." 
and you know fight back and be right and make them wrong and uh that's why we're taught like feels good and feels safe um and you know to like put someone in their place when they've said something mean or rude or make sure that you let someone know when they're being impolite or disrespectful using all this really loaded judgmental evaluation that just separates us and separates us and separates us more and more and more not uh, me the trainer saying like hey you should try this it's good but the feedback loop that people get and the relationship that they try it in um is the incentive to keep going because it's it's such a phenomenal difference i would say that it's on my mind almost all the time like i i'm always filtering like um so <laughs> NVC has this, uh, the way that they talk about the different languages. So they say, if you're speaking in nonviolent communication, you're speaking in giraffe. And they use the metaphor of a giraffe because they have um, very large hearts. So it's metaphorical. And then, um, and then by contrast, they say, if you're speaking in a language of judgment and evaluation and threats and punishments and rewards, then you're speaking in jackal. So this sort of like, almost a villainized um, animal character. So I would say that I'm attuned to the giraffe language almost all the time. When I'm reading a book or watching TV or overhearing a conversation in a cafe, I'm always noticing the amount of judgmental language, the amount of, um, you know, manipulation that we use to try to motivate um, someone, so I, you know, I you watch and listen all the time to that. Um, but I would say that, I don't know, 70, 80%, I'm really like strict on myself that if I say like, oh, I really, that was a really awesome movie. Then I check myself and I'm like, hmm, that's a judgment. So then I would maybe say, and what I meant to say was that, um, it met my needs for excitement and like a really good storyline. And I really like it when the characters are super well developed because I can connect with them better. So that's, that's then I reframe and based on, you know, what, what needs of mine were met or what did I enjoy about it rather than doing an overall division and evaluation. Um, and I would say that it, it um, infiltrates into my like social conversations too, because when I hear someone make a judgment, I'm not going to say like, that's not MVC, don't say that. But uh, it sparks my curiosity. Oh, you really didn't like this person's behavior. So was it about this need or was it about this need? And it's, it's the way that I kind of take that next step in the conversation rather than deciding to agree or disagree with their judgment or like giving them, them some yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the cool thing is that like, um, even someone who's like in practice 70, 80% of the time, I'm not some like superhero. I don't have a PhD in NBC. It's something I became fascinated with from the book and um, followed that up and looked into it more and practiced it more and took a few risks and got really excited about it. So it's like this meandering path that anyone can sort of join in on to a greater or lesser degree as they feel excited about it. And, um, you know, there's no one standing at the front of the room who's written the book and has all the answers. It's, it's, you know, it's as much an exploration as it, you know, there's no like check marks and X marks. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse than hearing stories about couples that, you know, come and do a workshop together because they want to like, you know, improve their communication. And then I find out later that they go home and they say, well, that's not NBC to each other. And that's just igna- enacting the exact same pattern. That's the same jackal pattern as I'm going to make you feel miserable if you're not doing what I want. You know, it's not talking about two sets of, of human needs anymore. So it's almost like uh, you can do it, but you're not doing it at the same time. <laughs> Oh, we've all, we're all jackals all the time. It's it's the baseline, you know, it's the normal for sure. Um, and, you know, when you start making this shift or learning this tool, it's not like about criticizing yourself every time you do that, but it's about understanding how that is going to affect the relationship around the, you. 
Yeah, like, you know, there's no class in school that says, you know, here's how we talk about conflict. And these are the, the important pieces that we need to think about. We just sort of like vomit out our dissatisfaction with the other person and hope that they're going to fix themselves. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's a really cool thing about MVC too is like, it's a really powerful way to get mad. If you just stand there and wag your finger and criticize, you know, you're just playing into the same game and the negative energy and the lack of safety is just amplifying and amplifying and amplifying. And she was able to just sort of put her boundary up and speak very loudly and very passionately and very clearly and, um, you know, was able to create some safety in that situation where she was, you know, shaking mad because when when we have problems and when we have issues and when we when we need a listener you know we don't we don't need to be fixed we don't we don't need our pain to be made to go away you know what do we all know like what do you do with pain you have to go through it you can't turn it off it doesn't work like that so you know it has to move through you your emotions have to move through you and so what the the reason that we reach out to other people when we're in pain or when we're suffering is, is so that we don't have to go through that alone so that we're connected to someone as we move through this hard thing. And when we make that connection with someone and then they try to fix us or tell us that our feelings are wrong or give us their advice or talk about themselves, you know, it like, I could like cry right now, like just the feeling of closing down and tensing up and um, that that is this pattern that we, that we do to each other in families and in friendships.